So even with Vice President Kamala Harris raking in millions of dollars since yesterday's announcement, plus the increasing number of powerful endorsements, Marianne Williamson says, hold on, wait just a minute. Clearly, the Democratic Party wants to move quickly and is eager to not only move on from all the infighting, but Dems also believe they have a fighting chance to beat Donald Trump. So does Marianne Williamson, and she's taking advantage of every moment now to step into the void while declaring that no one should simply be anointed to that position of nominee and that all candidates must be heard and their agendas explored. Marianne Williamson joining me once again here in studio. Good to see you again as the news continues to change. It sure um, does. You know, you want, you want a process where all candidates, in, including yourself, are, are taken seriously here are considered in a very serious manner. How do you go about doing that this close to the convention? Well, I have to get 300 delegates. We have a few people can write who are delegates to convention at marianne2024.com. Not that uh, signing that pledge to nominate me would mean that you were actually voting for me at the end of the process. It would mean that you were standing for an open convention. You know, the problem over the last year and a half is that it was decided that Joe Biden would simply be rubber stamped. The answer now is not to rubber stamp Kamala Harris. Let's don't get me wrong. I'm excited about this moment. Democrats need to take advantage of this exciting moment. But we also need to think deeply about what the larger goal is here. The larger goal is winning in November. So the tack that many people are taking is let's have everyone endorse her. Let's have everyone stand in line, which is exactly what we were doing behind Joe Biden. This is not democracy, number one. And also, it's not the way to win beyond the vote blue no matter who. Remember, Democrats ha can't just win if only people who are already committed Democrats vote for us in November. We need to appeal to to independence. We need to recognize complacency itself as our opposition here. Hillary, this is very much like 2016. It was a mistake for us to say, let's just continue the win of the last eight years. Too many people said, what, what win, what success, lady? I'm drowning. That was their response to Hillary Clinton. We cannot run just by saying that we've done so well in the last four years. And we also can't run just by making it about prosecuting Donald Trump. We will win by talking to the American people about how we're going to improve their lives over the next four years. And Kamala Harris should be uh, not only able, which I assume she's able, but she should be made to speak to this. We need to talk to the American people about health care. I need to hear from her about not only the obvious things like Ukraine, like Israel and Palestine, like immigration, but what about hunger in America? What about the fact that one in four Americans live with medical debt? What about the fact that 39% of Americans are skipping meals regularly in order to pay their rent. What about the fact that 62% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck? Now, when they say, well, we've got an economy that works for the middle class, millions of people in the United States are saying, what middle class? Middle class was the 1970s. Middle class was when the average American couple could afford a house. The average American couple could afford a yearly vacation. The average American couple could afford a car and for one parent to stay home if they wished and to send their kids to college. That's what we need to be speaking to, not just bragging about what we've already done and not just by speaking about how bad Donald Trump is. So I, I want this to be an open convention so that we can have the deeper conversations that I think are necessary in order to win in November. We, are, we can't just fall in line. You know, this is like, this is the Democratic Party here. We're supposed to, democracy should be at the center of our process. It's like a NASCAR race right now, the speed at which this is happening. And when I was out covering the, the RNC this past week, I was talking to bothers, voters on both sides. Um, and, they, and there were so many people that said to me, I'm not, I'm not ha happy either way. This is my party, I'm not happy. This is my party, I'm not happy. And now Democrats are rushing, they're, they're coalescing around Kamala Harris. The donors also, um, ha you have the analysts saying this is a done deal. Can you slow it down at this point? And what would it take to slow it down to open up the field for others like yourself to really have a chance here? I don't want to slow down the energy. 
it's kind of beautiful, the energy, the excitement, the feeling among Democrats, we have a chance now, we have a chance. What I'm saying, however, is we have to keep our eye on the ball. The ball is winning in November. And the idea of everybody just falling in line, endorsing Kamala without any insistence, what you got, Kamala? What, what are your views? How are you going to do this? That's, that, that is not it, democracy, and it's not even a winning strategy. A winning strategy is to say very respectfully to uh, Kamala Harris and anyone else who would come in. So far, the only person who's filed a petition is me. But if it's me, let it be me. Uh, why, why should we be so afraid of that? Uh, I think two women speaking, uh, uh, not in any kind of a catty way, but in a respectful way, in a meaningful way, Are you calling would be for very debates good here? for America. Of course I am, and that's why I'm seeking to get those uh, those uh, nominations. I've got a few. We've, we've got to stop surrendering our free thinking. We've got to stop being so afraid of democracy. We've got to stop being so afraid of an open conversation. An open convention will be very exciting, and anything less than that will get the excitement of the already vote blue no matter who. That is not enough to win in November. I'll tell you what, the last debate definitely showed America a big difference between Trump and Biden. We saw it was such a disaster for President Joe Biden, that debate. So wouldn't that be exciting to, to have the opportunity to debate this time around uh, among those that you know want to be on that Democratic ticket? You were on the debate stage with Kamala Harris when both of you were, were running for president. What do you think her strengths are? What do you think her weaknesses are? Uh, her, her, she's an experienced woman. Uh, however, her weaknesses, what does she stand for? What issue do you associate with her? Her civil rights record is very bad. Uh, sending people to uh, jail, to prison for marijuana in California. Not releasing people who even the courts had said should be released. And actually saying that she wasn't releasing them because they needed the cheap labor for firefighting in California. I, 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 uh, this idea that, you know, when people say we just have to stand behind Kamala, usually these are people who can pay for health care. These are people who can afford to send their kids to college. There's a whole swath of Americans out there who are hurting. Kamala, how are we going to address that? Because if all we're going to do is to brag about what we've done in the last four years, she keeps saying, even in the clip you showed, President Biden is in there fighting for the American people. All credit where credit is due, and in many ways he has, but millions and millions, even tens of millions of Americans, don't feel that. They're having trouble putting food on the table. And they find it, in my experience, what people say to me, being ne their, their concerns being neglected. We have, why are we not talking about poverty in America? Why are we not talking about near poverty? Why are we not talking about the fact that millions and millions and millions, in fact, 70% of the American people say that they live with chronic economic stress? And let's not over, let's not in any way underestimate the role that economic anxiety has in the mental health crisis. How are we going to wage peace? What are we going to do to actually face the climate emergency? We have the floods, we have the fires, we have the hurricanes. And no, I'm sorry, uh, this president has, as they call him the climate president, the truth is he's given more oil permits than Trump did. I want to hear from Kamala. What are you going to do? Are you going to just continue this investment in green energy on one you hand while on the other hand giving more permits to oil companies there is nothing wrong by uh, in saying uh, Kamala Harris needs to respond to these things talk to these things so whether it's Kamala Harris or you or someone else do Democrats now have a better chance of beating Trump than they did before Yes, I think we do. Of course, I think we do. But at the same time, this is more like 2016 than like 2020. 2020, the mood of the country was, please give us some normalcy. Six, now it's more like the anger, the frustration, the pain that is out there must be addressed. There's a Demo lot of fear, too. And a lot of fear. Kamala Harris is not being served by her supporters. She's not being served by the Democratic Party if this is just a coronation. She's not being served. She's being served by someone who says, what you got, Kamala? What you got? Because I know what I got. That would be good for Kamala Harris if we were to actually win in November. Marianne Williamson. Always a treat to have you here on set and this never, never normal election cycle. <laughs> never normal. I mean, the political arena is, is something we have never seen before. It's great to have you along for the ride. Thank Thanks, you. Marianne.